In your book, you mentioned a statistic, which is that interventions like surgery and medication produce unwanted side effects in more patients than benefited from them for chronic health conditions, um, often 50 to 60% of patients. So that's more than half. Why is that sort of still the first tool being used in the conventional system yeah, today? I think unfortunately that's true, is that many interventions actually harm more people than they help. And I think part of the reason is that we have a payment system that will pay for things that can be proven to help a certain number of patients. And then you're able to market it, you can get it approved, you can sell it, and you can make a lot of money off of it. And so that's what's pushed and that's what doctors have and that's what they deliver in those areas. So an example is back pain. Uh, surgery is uh, over $40 billion is done on surgery for back pain. And yet the vast majority of people, 80 to 85 percent, don't have something that surgery is going to benefit. Uh, so we looked at how much of the benefit that people get from surgery is actually due to the surgical procedure or simply the ritual of care going through, uh, you know, actually just getting care uh, by people that are taking care of you. So we looked at all the studies in which they had compared surgery with sham surgery. So they went through the whole ritual, the placebo surgery components, and then uh, followed them for up to six months later in their back pain and showed that there was no difference. All of them uh, improved at about the same rate in both groups. Uh, and yet there were more side effects in those that got the actual surgery. So that's an example of uh, having something that actually hurts people more than it helps them. And yet there's a huge industry doing back surgery. And so the economics drives it rather than the evidence. I ran uh, an office at the National Institutes of Health that did research on these areas a World Health Organization Center that did research on traditional medical practices. So I had the great opportunity to see a wide variety of types of healthcare practices with very different approaches and very different uh, modalities. Uh, and yet they all were claiming they were getting benefit. And I, I was thinking, well, how could that be? I mean, some are science-based, some aren't science-based, et cetera. And so as I began to look deeper into it and look into the science of it, I realized that what they were all doing is that they were optimizing belief, ritual, conditioning, and various mechanisms that before had been sort of covered up with the term placebo effect. They were all relegated to the placebo effect. If you couldn't show a molecule worked beyond the placebo effect, it wasn't real. And yet that's where, you know, 60, 70, sometimes 80% of the healing was coming from in these systems. And so we began to do a deep dive into, well, what is the placebo effect and how does it work? And uh, maybe it's not placebo after all. Maybe it's actually a very core of what most of these systems use to induce healing, including our conventional system. Uh, and that, I think, largely is the case. Uh, I don't call it the placebo effect anymore. I call it the meaning response. It's inducing a healing response uh, by arranging the context and the meaning of care in a way that taps into our own inherent healing capacity. And by tapping into that inherent healing capacity, we get tremendous benefit regardless of what the actual modality is that we're using, whether it's a drug or a pill or an herb or a needle or a knife. And so the placebo effect is the sleeping elephant in healthcare. When we wake up to it and begin to use it rather than discard it, uh, it is gonna so uh, enhance our ability to address chronic illness uh, in healthcare. We used to think that uh, the placebo was just due to expectation. If you believed it, it was a belief and that was gonna happen. And so you had to uh, sort of blind people if they weren't getting an active treatment, if you were giving them a placebo, they couldn't know, right? Because that would then interfere with their belief and then that would interfere with the placebo effect. We now know that's completely wrong. Okay, uh, there's been extensive studies now using open placebo. And what they do is they tell the patient, I'm gonna give you an inert substance, but if you go through this healing ritual, if you work with me on this and you engage in the therapy, uh, the evidence shows you're gonna get better. And you know what, they do. <laughs> it actually is just as good to do open placebo as blind placebo. You don't have to be unethical and tell them you're, you're, not, you're giving something when you're not. You can say, this is what I'm doing. Let's go on this healing journey together and let's go through it and you'll get better. Because a lot of what happens is unconscious. A lot is actually social and emotional changes, the belief of the provider, the practitioner, the culture that you live in. And so if you can arrange that to create an optimal healing environment, then 
they can also stimulate the person's healing. And it's not so much what you're thinking up in your head that does have some influence, but not nearly as much as we thought. So that's a discovery that's come out of that kind of research now.